Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just finished watching episode 8 a little while ago, so I'm going to go ahead and watch episode 9 right now. I'm curious to see what's going to happen now that Jamie has met with his grandfather, and of course his grandfather initially wasn't going to support them by giving his men, but then on the sly sent his men to go along with Jamie. Of course, playing both, two, both sides against each other because he signed the treaty, the neutrality agreement with Colum. So that protects him if the Jacobite uprising fails. And he sent his men. So if they succeed, it protects him there as well. So he can't be seen as a traitor to either side. So it's a smart move on his part. So I'm curious to see just exactly how that's going to play out. And of course, we're back in Scotland now. So we see Colum and we've seen Leary, and I'm assuming we're going to see Dougal and some of the others as well. And I'm really looking forward to seeing some of those characters show up again. Because like I said in the previous video, this is February. Today is now February the 8th. And I watched season one all the way back in July, June, July, and maybe early August of last year. So it's been a while since I saw season one. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of those characters show back up as well. Now before I start the episode, let me just ask you if you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload each new video. And also if you have any thoughts or observations about this episode or the previous episodes before this one, please leave some comments down below. And that will help my channel with YouTube search algorithm and it'll help the channel to grow. So let's go ahead and get started with the episode. Well, this isn't starting off in the 1700s. That looked like a tank that just drove by. Tank treads, anyway. Well, I guess it is we starting off. We left Beaufort Castle, a hundred strong, and traveled towards Creef to join forces with Murta and the Lallybrock Frasers. But our numbers dwindled along the way. Many who resented being to die for. Assuming they went win. According to plan, all would meet up in Perth to join the Prince's army. Mutter, pardon me if I forgo the wee jig that I had planned in honor of your arrival. <laughs> I would have been guy pleased to put it out five days ago. Aye, aye. It took I really us like longer Murtaugh. than foreseen. Coming through Cody Arik. Name me long to look fit. Mutter's been looking after you well, then. No, 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 no. It's been horrible. She forced me to <laughs> mend his socks and to fetch his meals. Yeah, just trying to educate the lad in the finer points of traveling in the Highlands. <laughs> All right, children. Mr. Clear. I washed my mouth out with whiskey <laughs> in preparation for yeah, a Yeah, here they come. From you, eh? <laughs> Oh, good to see some things haven't changed. Oh, it's been our long clear. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Indeed it has, Rupert. Well, where's Willie? He went and got himself married. <laughs> to an Irish lass. Sailed off to America with the bride's family. We'll no mention that traitorous bastard's name again. You know, marriage could do you all some good. <laughs> You know, welcome for your beloved <laughs> uncle. Oh, here Dougal. comes Dougal. Huh? Hey. You look well, lad. Hey. Well, they joined the prince's army. Still just cotters, taxmen, smiths. Must have even held a weapon, let alone used one in a fight. A lot oh, of parallels to the American Revolution. Point. So, I've decided to stay here for a time. We'll put a sword in your hand and teach you to kill the red coats. But until then... Form up! <laughs> what are you laughing at, bastard? He'd make a good drill sergeant. <laughs> when you hear this, you will face flip. Face flip. Your own left. 
<laughs> oh, she's going to have some flashbacks. That scene with Murtaugh reminded me of Full Metal Jacket a little bit. When they were in boot camp. Dougal's looking for a seat at the table. Hmm. It's not exactly Delmonico steak, is it? Ma'am? Well, that's what we think you Yanks have for chow every day. Ma'am, can I ask you a question? What kind of food is this trying to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Private Lucas, is trying to be black pudding. Though you would probably call it sausage. Then what do you call what we call pudding? Pudding. The British and Americans, two people separated by common language. <laughs> George Bernard Shaw. That's right. <laughs> My mom was Irish. She said he's one of the great Irish writers of all time. Pop says he's a communist. <laughs> well, now we know where she got that Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ or whatever it was that she that she says. We know where she got that from. You're right, lass. You've been very quiet these past few days. I had wondered about I'm that. Fine. It's just. Bloody sheep! Dougal wasn't very helpful there, was he? Uncle. These times stick your man and be on your way. As you see. No, he had to do it. He had to say it. Had to put him in his place. If he didn't, his own men wouldn't be able to respect him. You, you never told him about that, did you? About my generous offer to you. To look after you hmm. as your husband. He's trying to blackmail you. You promised to me to be my bride if he died. True words have never been spoken. <laughs> I can see that you still bear a grudge. Let's get one thing clear, Dougal Mackenzie. If I ever thought of you, then I might hold a grudge for this all the things either. that you've done. But I'll try my damnedest. Fuck yourself. <laughs> all right, then. For a clear. Perhaps you're right about me. To see a steward back on the throne. Well, knowing how history turned out. He very well may give his life, but won't have a Stuart back on the throne. Well, they're starting to shape up nicely. Reload. Pretty slow on that reload. The Lord properly. Seen it happen. You completely idiotic. Is that what you want? It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> he doesn't know what Take that off is. Your other boot. Take it off. Oh. This is a little bit of 
PTSD that she's kind of reliving. But reliving events that won't happen for a couple hundred years. So she says to me, all Ross yours. and Kincaid, bring them to me. Hmm. Someone's in trouble. There's new guards in that place. Jimmy, did you know here? I bought volunteers for our cause. Volunteers? Aye. Here of your own free will, are you? Hmm. Doesn't look like it, does it? Prepare to bleed, are you? Yeah. No harm will follow. Hmm. Yeah, they weren't quite volunteers, were they? The rest of you are dismissed. Strangers into the camp last night. For that, they'll receive six lashes. Oh, he's going to have them flogged. What the? Certainly, Jamie knows about flogging. Well, it's not quite flogging, I guess. Back in the pipe. 